Damn. Victims range in age from six months to 12 years old. Six months? I thought you said three years old. Six months? What the f Yo. What's good YouTube? Today we're gonna be looking at what happens to pedos in jail. I'm not gonna lie, if you're a pedo, I don't care what happens to you in jail. I just wanna see how your reputation is. Do they hate you? Do they leave you alone? We're gonna find out. If you're watching this from YouTube, make sure you guys join us on Twitch. Links in the description. We're live every day. Without further ado, let's get started. Well, if it's all right, I'd like to tell you where it started. Go ahead. All right, well, we were, he was my bunkie and I had found out that he was in prison for uh, child molestation. So, um, that night he was trying to justify why he did it. You're already in jail for child molestation and you're trying to justify it? The whole point of getting arrested was for you to realize your mistakes and you're telling your inmates that it was justified? You're cooked. And I just told him to be quiet and he would have to leave in the morning to find a new cell. But he continued to talk about it and try to justify it. So, so what'd you do? I wrapped a cord around his neck and I took his life. This Damn. I think he was already serving life because for you to murder a, a pedo is Steven Sanderson. What did he do? He made at the Saginaw Correctional Facility in Freeland. Okay. And the killer of his fellow inmate Theodore Dyer. Damn. Convicted child molester. Should have not did that. When Steven was agitated by Dyer's stories of crime. What happened? He took the opportunity and did what he thought was best in the time given. Okay. Steven has won himself a place among dozens of inmates around the world who can't even stand to be in the same room as a child molester. Let's say y'all were arrested and y'all had a child molester like right in your bunk bed. I would feel so goddamn uncomfortable, bro. No, don't get me wrong. Crimes in all aspects is wrong. But if I'm in the same cell with a nigga who sleeps with kids, maybe my crime was justified to some extent. Nigga, you cannot justify child predators. I would get mad. I'm not gonna lie. If I don't kill, bro, I'm at the very least beat up, bro, and get moved to some other prison. Because to them, a prison sentence is not any different from a death sentence. In this video, we're taking you through the stories of some of the most high-profile child molesters who were killed or brutally attacked in Damn. jail. Okay. Let's get started. What's Richard up? Huckle, Britain's worst pedophile. Okay. This is Richard William Huckle. Okay. An Englishman who worked as a freelancer. His name is Huckle, of course. Photographer in Malaysia and participated in the local community before moving there permanently in 2010. Okay. He hoped to establish himself as a successful photographer and, and what he a do? reputation in the community. All right. Huckle also worked part time for the Nike Football Club in Malaysia. But even with such a full schedule, he made time for his crime. In 2014, the police discovered a network of pedophiles operating on a dark web network called the Love Zone. No wonder why you wanted to be a photographer. Now I'm wondering what you were trying to photograph. And you working with little high school boys, huh? In Malaysia? You thought going to a foreign country was gonna save your ass, huh? Now look at you, dumbass nigga. They identified a member who always made posts using the greeting, Hayas, and had a distinctive freckle on one of his fingers. The police assumed the identity of the member Shannon McCool and used his website to catch other pedophiles. They Damn. rescued 85 children from ongoing abuse and arrested hundreds of pedophiles. Y'all niggas hit 85 children? That's a whole community. This is one of those niggas with the candy vans. You, you know, the white vans with free candy? That's what they was doing. How you get 85 kids? Don't you bust from the police officers. Just imagine what the inmates are going to do once they find this out. He's done. One of which was yours truly. Due to the number of children he had abused and Damn. the attitude of his posts, the police discovered his real identity and alerted the National Crime Agency. Okay. And Huckle was arrested at Gatwick Airport on December 19th, 2014. Okay. Huckle had no criminal record, and the police released him on bail under the condition that he lives with his parents. He's a child weirdo. Why would y'all do that? You don't put a child molester out on public. However, his mother confronted him about the allegations, and he drunkenly admitted to raping children aged 3 to 13. Whatever happens to him in prison, I appreciate you prisoners, because this nigga has whatever is coming to him. 8 to 13! Wait, wait, is it 3? You're lying. Is it 3? He drunkenly admitted to raping children aged 3 <gasps> He said 3! I thought he said 8 to 13! It's getting me heated, bro. Yeah, even 8 is bad, but nigga, 3? And they put his ass on bond, bruh. After which, his parents contacted the police and implored them to arrest him. Good, he good parents. He was re-arrested and charged with 91 counts. He was denied bail by the police and imprisoned good. HMP Lewis before being transferred to HMP Belmarsh in London to await trial. Good. 
At an initial hearing at the Old Bailey in January of 2016, Huckle pled not guilty to all 91 charges. Oh, he pled not guilty. Okay. An hour to read in court. What's with you hitting the symbol? You not Drake. He not gonna free you, little bro. Guilty to all 91 charges, which took over an hour to read in court. Damn. During a preliminary trial hearing in April, Huckle pled guilty to 71 of the 91 charges he was facing after a request to watch all of the evidence against him in court. Damn. The victims ranged in age from six months to 12 years old. Six months? Six months? I thought you said three years old. Six months? Niggas slept with people that were six months old. What the fuck? Who allowed to give the baby to this nigga? That's literally a child that can't even walk yet. That's a baby, bro. Please tell me he got what he deserved in jail. To 12 years old. He boasted about his crimes to other pedophiles, posting such comments as, quote, Hit the jackpot. A three-year-old girl as loyal to me as my dog and nobody seemed to care. Impoverished kids are definitely much easier to seduce than middle-class kids. You're bragging about smashing poor kids. In the end, Richard Huckle was sentenced to life imprisonment with a minimum term of 20. No, he deserves to get death sentence. What is life, nigga? Was the court not hearing the shit he said? Nigga, six months. Nigga, he slept with a six-month-year-old. He don't deserve to live no more. 25 years, making him one of the UK's most prolific child sex offenders. His crimes shocked the nation, and his case was widely covered by the media. What happened to him? But the dark story didn't end there. In the years that followed Huckle's conviction, it emerged that he had made plans to abuse more children in the Philippines. The true scale of Huckle's depravity was only fully understood after his death. In October of 2019, what he happened? was found dead in his prison cell, having been stabbed to death by a fellow inmate. The killer inmate, Paul Fitzgerald. I ain't seen none. I ain't seen none. I don't know what happened in that prison. That's what you get, nigga. I don't like wishing on niggas downfall. If you doing shit like that, I have no remorse for you, buddy. Was said to have attacked as revenge for Huckle's crimes against children. The tragic and dark story of Richard Huckle serves as a chilling reminder of the depths of human depravity. Let's clap it up for the prisoner who did that. That's crazy, bro. And the damage that can be caused by those who seek to harm the innocent. Okay. Roy William Whiting. Of course he's a pedo. Look at his teeth, bro. The nigga has butter in his teeth. How is it in a horrible photo I can still see that your teeth is chopped? 64 years old. This is Sarah Payne, a harmless eight-year-old girl with the sweetest of smiles who was playing hide-and-seek with her siblings, Lee, Luke, and Charlotte, at her grandparents' house in Kingston, Gorse, West Sussex. What happened? Sarah had hit her head and ran off crying, just meters away from her older brothers who were out of sight. A frantic search began, but the days turned into weeks, and the weeks turned into 16 agonizing days. Damn! Finally, her naked body was discovered in a shallow grave a few miles away, her angelic face forever frozen in terror and pain. The police immediately launched a manhunt, determined to bring the monster responsible to justice. But as the investigation dragged on, hope began to fade. It wasn't until months later that they finally had a suspect in their sights. Yours truly. Roy was arrested several weeks later after a man who knew him came forward, and a knife was found hidden in his car. In June of that year, Roy admitted charges of abduction and indecent assault and was sentenced to four years in prison. I did not hear that correctly. Y'all found a girl, eight years old, naked, dead. You gave his ass four years in prison? Who the hell is this nigga's lawyer? Saul Goodman? What the hell? Despite a psychiatrist's warning that he was likely to reoffend, Roy was released from prison in November of 1997 after serving just over two years of his sentence. And he got a good behavior? Did y'all miss out on the part that he killed an eight-year-old? El justice system, bruh. He was one of the first people in Britain to go on the sex offenders register, but he was forced to serve an extra five months in prison for refusing to participate in a sex offender rehabilitation program. In November of 2002, Roy was given a 50-year minimum sentence by Home Secretary David Blunkett, meaning he would not be released from prison until 2051 at the age of 92. No, you. Roy appealed against the ruling, and in 2010, the high court reduced his minimum term to 40 years, making him eligible okay. for parole at the age of 32. Okay. Okay. Roy's time in prison was a living hell. 
Good. The violence and tragedy that he endured left a lasting mark on his body and soul. Okay. In 2002, he was attacked by convicted murderer Ricky Tregaskis with a razor, leaving a six-inch scar on I his I see none! In 2011, he was stabbed in the eye by another inmate, and in 2018, he was viciously attacked by two prisoners in his cell at Wakefield Prison. I ain't seen none! I ain't seen none! That's all I'm gonna say, man. Chat, did, did any of y'all see anything? Damn, it's crazy! I think he's injuring himself, because I ain't, I ain't really see anything. <laughs> the attackers had smuggled blades into the wing, and punched and kicked Roy in the face and upper body before stabbing him multiple times. Roy crawled under his bed to protect himself, but the attackers did not stop until the door was forced open. Roy said he had never had any trouble with his attackers, and he was used to being called nonce, pedophile, and baby killer by inmates. It's a miracle he survived, but it's inevitable that if he puts his guard down again, he won't make it out alive. I mean, Ashley I see James nine. Brofo. This is 39-year-old Ashley James Brofo. What did he do? Darkness of life began before he was even born. Okay. His mother didn't want him, so he was raised by his grandmother alongside his stepbrother, Terrence Kelly. It was a okay. childhood filled with abuse and violence. Okay. Which would shape Brofo's twisted mind and make him every parent's worst nightmare. What did he do? In what July do? of 2022, the full extent of his depravity was revealed in a sentencing hearing in Birth District Court. A young girl was staying with her step-grandparents during the school holidays. Okay. She innocently asked if she could walk their dog alone to the park. Damn. Bropo saw her near the park and approached- Alright, chat, that basically means that if you have a child, please do not leave them unaccompanied in the public walking- Parents, come on, nigga. You never leave your child doing things like that out in the public, especially if you know that there's men that could do anything. My parents didn't even let me go outside by myself with no supervision. At the very least, I at least go with an older sibling or some shit, but- From behind, luring her with a burger from Hungry Jack's. He took her hand and lured her to his house. Once inside, Brofo assaulted and exposed himself to the girl. She tried to leave, but he lured her to his bedroom. In the house was also his carer, who had seen him enter the house with the child. He immediately tried to interrupt the assault by banging on the front door. The girl was able to escape, running back to her grandparents' house to report the incident. Brofo's lawyer tried to blame his clients, quote unquote, opportunistic offense on his intellectual disability and schizophrenia. Shut up, nigga! Oh, oh, I wasn't thinking straight. So that is the reason why you wanted to sleep with a little girl? Nigga, you're just weird. You're just weird! You can't use that card now! But the state prosecutor argued that it was only because Brofo's carer happened to visit that the girl was able to escape. Brofo pled guilty to two counts of indecently dealing with a child under 13 and encouraging a child to engage in sexual acts. He faced up to 20 years in Hakia prison in Australia, what happened? but he had only served one year before he met his unfortunate end. Damn! On the they 9th do not of play. March 2023, Brofo was found unresponsive in his cell at Perth's Hakia prison. The staff provided first aid and paramedics attended the scene, but they were unable to revive him. The homicide squad is treating his death as suspicious, and several male prisoners are assisting detectives with their inquiries. DeAndre I see none. Austin. I see none. This is DeAndre Austin, a convicted rapist charged with committing 13 sexual offenses on his three minor nieces. That's what we're doing now. Family members, nigga. How sick do you have to be to sleep with your family members, nigga? Look at how young they are, bro. I hate people, bro. Who will identify as Jane Doe 1, 2, and 3. He periodically shared quarters with them during the period from 2002 to 2006, which gave him his lustful opportunities. The accommodation was so crowded that Jane Doe 1 slept on a fold-out bed in the living room. Okay. The defendant slept on a couch about four feet away. During the winter of 2001, he began rubbing her leg when they were alone in the apartment. Around Valentine's Day of 2002, he began feeling, now quoting the Jane Doe, hands touching on my body in a weird way. By the time she was 10 years old, DeAndre was manhandling her and doing explicit things to her. This type of pedophilic behavior continued with all three girls. And the worst part was, what? their grandparents didn't believe them. Oh my goodness. 
The minute a child tells me that a family member has done shit, nigga, I'm believing them. What? They're 10 years old. They have no reason to lie. It's not only one of them. It's three of them. No, y'all have to take some blame in that because it's three girls telling you this. It's not even just one. Them grandparents need to go. Someone needs to put a plug on your, your retirement center home because why would three of them lie? Hell, grandparents right there. Austin was sentenced in 2008 to a life sentence with the possibility of parole for the continuous sexual assault of his three elementary school age nieces. That's where he met his cellmate, Rodney Jordan, who was serving a two-year term for a first-degree burglary conviction from Los Angeles. So bro is gonna get out in two years. He ain't even have to do that. So now he's probably gonna serve way more because he wanted to, you know, enact justice. And hey, bro, I ain't seen nothing. He ain't even do it for real. Let's be honest, chat. Yo, judge, he ain't do nothing, bro. Just free, bro. County. On the 15th of October, 2020, DeAndre Austin was pronounced dead at 6.30 p.m less than an hour after correctional officers responded to a report of a man down in his cell. Okay. According to a news release from the California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation. Authorities placed Austin's cellmate, 29-year-old Rodney Jordan, in a segregated cell, and it's considered to be the prime suspect in Austin's death, but it's still unclear how exactly Austin died. Okay. So to all child molesters and sex offenders, this is the unquestionable fate behind bars. Despite having a maximum security prison, a sex offender will fear for his safety everywhere he goes. Good, good. And while some might be left with bruises and marks, none of them are forgetting for one second that at any moment, their fate can be no different than these child molesters who were killed Facts. in jail. Facts, facts. Let that be a conclusion for y'all. If you're ever over here thinking about doing anything crazy, just know you're gonna die sooner or later, all right? Don't do it, don't do it. Be a regular person like the rest of humanity, all right? If you're watching this from YouTube, make sure you guys subscribe. Join us on Twitch, links in the description. We're live every day. Marks are for life. Love y'all.